Hey, it's Mike here, and today I want to talk about whole foods. What is an actual whole food? As somebody who espouses a whole food vegan diet, I get this question a lot, and similar questions like, is soy milk a whole food? What about nut butters? What about smoothies? And understandably so, because there seems to be such a large gray area here. So you might be trying to eat a whole food vegan diet, but endlessly confused about where to actually draw the line. In the strict literal sense, a whole food is a fully intact food, like a complete apple, but when we look at these studies of reversing various diseases by whole food doctors, it's clear that things like ground whole wheat still count. So in certain cases, minimal processing is okay. And you know me, I'm trying to follow an evidence-based diet. I'm trying to look at the studies. So let's take a look at where refining matters and where it doesn't. Two huge goals of eating whole foods is to prevent spiking of blood sugar and also blood fats. You're probably familiar with how blood sugar spikes can be bad, but to quickly explain a blood fat spike or hyperlipidemia or sludge blood, whatever you want to call it, it's bad because it not only lowers the oxygen content of your blood and your blood flow, it causes angina or chest pain in people with heart disease and can compromise artery function among other negative things. So we want to avoid that to prevent heart disease and other circulatory diseases, and there are a lot of those like Alzheimer's and spinal disc degeneration and erectile dysfunction and the list goes on. But then there's a third thing that you also don't want to spike, and that is growth hormones. We know that animal proteins can spike these, but also isolated plant proteins like soy protein isolate can, in certain cases in higher quantities, also spike IGF-1 insulin-like growth factor 1. Elevated levels of IGF-1 can fuel cancer and acne, among other diseases, which is why you're probably never going to hear me recommend any protein powders on this channel. So when whole foods really matter is when you have higher calorie foods, that need that fiber to prevent the quick absorption of sugar and fat so that you don't end up with blood sugar or blood fat spikes. And to elaborate, in terms of sugar, it's not just about blood sugar spikes, it's also about blood sugar dropping past where it should be. A study that simply illustrates everything I'm talking about is this one showing that eating whole apples will cause a normal increase in blood sugar and go back down to baseline. But apple juice will peak your blood sugar and then cause your body to go into hypoglycemia. It'll go back down below baseline which might make you feel a little lightheaded, and this will tell your body to dump triglycerides into your blood because you think you're starving. Seeing this information made me finally understand why I have never felt worse than after I drank a large quantity of fresh squeezed orange juice. I didn't understand it until I saw that. And as Dr. Esselstyn, who I'm sure you know by now if you watch my channel, he has studies reversing heart disease using a whole food vegan diet. In an interview, he said, quote, Definitely no juice. Juice will spike your glucose. You might as well pour the sugar bowl down your throat. But let's be level-headed here. Pressing chard into juice is just simply not going to be spiking your blood sugar because there's hardly any calories there. You know, it's about the evidence. You can't be afraid of straight kale juice because it's not whole. Same goes for tea. It might not have the fiber in it, but that doesn't mean you need to go and eat the tea bag. So calorie density matters, and looking over to fat in foods, taking a whole olive and eating it is not going to cause that hyperlipidemia, but pressing that into to olive oil, even if it's cold pressed extra virgin olive oil, as this study shows, can impair your artery function by 31%. It's because in digestion, olive oil can immediately be absorbed, but the fat inside of the olive, plant cell, and fiber is slowly digested and released, like how we would eat it in nature. So because something like an olive is a calorie-dense food, it matters when you're refining it for something like chard, again, not so much. All right, now to all of those whole food gray areas like tofu and smoothies and nut butter. From what I have gathered in terms of choosing your whole food vegan diet, there appears to be a spectrum, maybe a grade A whole food vegan diet and a grade B whole food vegan diet. This is best illustrated by looking at what Dr. Esselstyn uses to reverse heart disease, a grade A more strict whole food vegan diet, and then what maybe his son Rip Esselstyn has in his Engine 2 diet, which is based off Dr. Esselstyn's research. The Engine 2 diet includes nut butter, for example. Well, Dr. Esselstyn says no nuts at all, quote, as nuts are a rich source of saturated fats, my preference is no nuts for heart disease patients. So that's a step beyond what is whole and what is not whole, just what is the best choice for reversing disease. 
And these doctors often use the terminology of traffic lights. A red light is do not eat, a yellow light is eat sparingly, and a green light is eat as much as you want. Some examples of green light foods would include whole starches and whole grains like whole wheat and whole oats and potatoes and sweet potatoes and quinoa and millet and also beans and vegetables, all the vegetables. Back to nut butters, they are every bit as much of a whole food as ground wheat might be, but since a serving of peanut butter has three grams of saturated fat in it, yellow light food for sure. And then red light foods are of course meat, dairy, fish, eggs, and oil, and refined sugars, and things like that. But what about smoothies? Where do they lie? Well, here's Esselstyn's view, quote, When fruit is blenderized, great word, the fructose is separated from the fiber and the absorption is very rapid through the stomach. This rapid absorption tends to injure the liver, glycates protein, and injures the endothelial cells, which is the lining of your arteries. Back to the apple study, yes, pureed apple also caused subjects to go hypoglycemic. This shows that it's not just the presence of fiber, but the presence of intact fiber that stabilizes blood sugar. So looking at something like Soylent, where they just add some fiber to some refined sugar and some oil, it's not a health food and it's not gonna be a good day for your bloodstream. But in terms of fruit, looking at other studies on other fruit, like bananas, bananas do not seem to spike blood sugar. In fact, they help stabilize blood sugar generally, so it's not black and white here. So if you wanna have smoothies, go the safe route and stick to more greens and berries and less apples and oranges. Tofu though, what about tofu? Tofu has actually had the skin of the bean removed, so it's not technically entirely whole, but there doesn't appear to be any reason that it would spike blood fat. Dr. Esselstyn's diet plan seemed to use it sparingly. Why? Well, quote, the problem with tofu and all those soy products is that they are about 40% fat. If anything, I prefer a very, very light silken tofu occasionally. And from what I have read, it appears that this is more of a weight loss strategy than anything else. There doesn't seem to be any disease prevention reason to not be eating tofu. It's not like soybean oil, which could be harmful for your arteries, or soy protein isolate, which can boost IGF-1 in high amounts. What about plant milk though? Plant milk, they are straining out the liquid from the fiber. You are not eating all that fiber, but it is still really low calorie. A glass of almond milk has only about 38 calories in it, for example. So there doesn't appear to be any logical reason to not be drinking plant milks, especially when they don't have any additives or weird sweeteners. Speaking of sweeteners, what about sweeteners like maple syrup? Well, in Dr. Esselstyn's study where he reversed heart disease, they say, quote, patients were also asked to avoid sugary foods, sucrose, fructose, and drinks containing them, refined carbohydrates, fruit juices, syrup, etc. Dr. Esselstyn recommends chopped dates as a sweetener over other sweeteners, but it appears that he treats it as a yellow light food. Maple syrup is in his wife's recipe book in a sparing nature, for example. And agave, definitely highly refined. It's somewhat akin to corn syrup. Definitely stay away from that. So to some of these gray area and yellow light foods, you have to decide for yourself based on your goals, whether to fully eliminate these or just reduce them. If you don't have high cholesterol or an existing disease, then these yellow light foods are definitely not as much of a threat. Whether you want to eat more or less, it all fits under the umbrella of a whole food vegan diet. It's just up to you. I also quickly want to talk about restriction here. If you're coming from a background of an eating disorder and being really worried about what foods to restrict or not, if that affects you negatively, then you need to think about this a little bit more. It seems like a safer bet to just more gradually transition to a whole food vegan diet, making sure that you're properly planning all your meals so you have enough food all the time. And I would also say sometimes it's better to not restrict if you're in a position of restricting or not eating at all. For example, you're in an airport and there's some oil and some food. I would say go ahead and eat instead of not eating. Also, well, yeah, a whole oat groat is better for you than rolled oats. Really, really focusing on this detail where there's sort of diminishing returns can possibly have a negative emotional effect on you without having really any measurable physical improvement. So to summarize, a whole food vegan diet exists on a sort of a spectrum. There's that grade A diet, and then there's also the sort of grade B engine two style diet. I would say grade A is really for disease reversal and grade B might be more for disease prevention. Yeah, it might be more clear to call it a whole foods and lightly processed foods diet, but that's kind of a mouthful, and I think you kind of understand now. 
So I hope I didn't just make this more confusing than it previously was. Let me know if you have any other questions. I'm planning on doing a video about oil-free cookware, a bit of an investigation there as per request. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thanks especially to my Patreon supporters for buying me a little bit more time to put into these videos. I really appreciate it. I will see you all next time. Because if you have an obsessive personality and you start going, I just gotta eat whole foods and only whole foods and all the time and the best foods, and then pretty soon you crack and you're making Kentucky Fried Chicken mukbang videos three times a week.